Well, good morning. Good morning. morning. Glad to see you guys here and also those that have tuned in Facebook Live and YouTube Live. We're grateful for that also. Uh, it's a beautiful day today. Good to be inside a nice air-conditioned place. I'm grateful for that. So yes. let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, and praise you for today. And again, thank you for air conditioning. It makes life more comfortable and bearable. We're grateful for this. But, Lord, we are thankful for the, the weather that you give us. And, Lord, whether it's sunny or rainy or hot or cold, Lord, we know you're in control. And so, Father, we uh, just trust you. Thank you so much for sending your son, Jesus Christ. It's in his Amen. name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Well, we're going to be in the book of 1 John, 1 John chapter 1. So while you're turning there, just one real an announcement to make, and that is that we do have a Discover Indian River class this Sunday at 9.15. Uh, and so that's over in the, the fellowship, not fellowship, in the education building. Uh, it's an opportunity for people considering becoming a member or just wanting to learn more about Indian River Baptist Church. So just pray uh, that we'll have a good response to that and turn out for that and if you know someone who's interested hey be willing to go hey i'll go to that class with you you know sometimes people may be a little hesitant to go but if you invite them to go with you they'll, they'll probably come uh also it's not really an announcement for us because it's going on right now but just be in prayer for world changers world changers is taking place this week and our church is helping feed one of the the crews so we're grateful for the people who are line that up and are volunteering for that all right well we're going to be in uh first john as i mentioned there uh obviously this is john the, the guy who the gospel of john is named after one of the 12 disciples that went about with jesus and it's interesting the way that he starts this letter we have to think as you read through the whole letter you begin to understand that he's doing something here he is writing to combat false teaching and the false teaching that was kind of prevalent in that particular area in that particular time was what is called Gnosticism. And Gnostic comes from the word knowledge. And so there were people out there, heretics, you know, false teachers, who were saying they had a special knowledge of Jesus. Beyond what the Bible says, and beyond what it's just me and, and God, I've got a special knowledge. And the way that manifested itself was they said that well, Jesus is the son of God and when he came to earth he didn't really become fully human because humanity you know we're so uh, the material world is so sinful the material world is what chains us down how could the son of God be contained like that and so he just appeared he was kind of more like a, a phantom you know it's kind of like his feet didn't really touch the ground so to speak but if you read the whole New Testament you read the Gospels you see no oh, Jesus I uh, when he bled, that was real blood, right? When he uh, spit to make a, a paste to put on the guy's eye, that was real spit. It wasn't just fake, you know. It wasn't, and so, but there's this idea that, you know, Jesus being uh, uh, holy, it was just spirit. He didn't really become fully human. Well, John, as he writes this, he's going to combat that teaching right at the very beginning. And you're going to see how he does this. And it's a reminder to us that we can trust the word of God. It's a reminder to us also of who Jesus is and what he's done for us. Amen. So he says in verse one, he says, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes and which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the father and was manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. And so it sounds familiar, I hope it does. It sounds very similar to the way John starts the Gospel of John. And over there he talks about in the beginning was the Word. And the word was with God and the word was God. Notice how he says that which was from the beginning as we read here in 1 John. He's talking about not just the, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus. But he's talking about from the very beginning, from time past, even before time began, but also what they have seen. 
He says, which we have heard. So they heard Jesus speak. Think of all the multiple occasions where Jesus spoke. When you look in the New Testament, if you have the red letter you know, edition where it puts the words of Jesus in red, you're going to see that Jesus said a lot. And sometimes he said very little. You know, just one or two phrases here, but over, you take the whole thing in. He was constantly teaching. He was constantly speaking. And John is going to say, we were eyewitnesses. Not only did we see him, but we heard him. And so we said, we heard him, which we have seen with our eyes. And so just kind of that, that quick glance, you know, if you were at the Sermon on the Mount, you would have heard Jesus and you would have seen him. He would have been there, you know, teaching when Jesus was in a boat, teaching. They could, what, hear him and see him. That was part of the reason one time he got in a boat to push off from the shore so that he could talk to more, more people. Amen. Amen. But they could, what, see and hear him. You know, that's not what you typically think of if something's like a ghost or a spirit or something like that. But then he goes even further, which we have looked upon. Now, not just talk about seeing like the crowds would see Jesus, but he's saying looked upon, more like gazed, like think about the, the Last Supper when they were sitting there. Was that more of an intense moment, a time of close intimacy and fellowship? Absolutely. Just think John was one who got to be on the Mount of Transfiguration and see Jesus transformed. It's, it's this idea of observation, not just seeing something, but observing it, paying attention to, you know, really contemplating, really knowing that. So John is making the case here that this Jesus is real. And then goes even further, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes and we have looked upon. See, you see with your eyes, but also you what? We begin to process, you begin to understand. He says that we have looked upon what in our hands have handled they actually touched Jesus they actually were there in his presence you know I mean to, to touch him and he touched them and you know multiple people in a sense touched Jesus remember the story where he's walking in the crowd and the woman comes up behind saying if I just touch him I'll be made well and Jesus says somebody touched me Amen. and I love it how the Peter, hey, everybody's touching you. <laughs> That's one of my favorite scenes in the scripture. It's kind of like, yeah. they're like, everybody's touching you. And that was common. As he's going by, people are wanting to, to hold him, touch him, do something. I mean, people do it in our day and time. If somebody famous walks by and you're in that crowd of people, you're walking by, you just want to touch him. You know, give me a high five or something. You know, Then you can say, I'll never wash this hand again. <laughs> I touched them, you know, kind of thing. You can't touch a spirit. You can't touch that which is a ghost. You can't touch that which is not physical. So the point he's making here is that this one that he's writing about concerning who the word of life, go back to John, the gospel of John, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. He's saying this one who is God became flesh and what dwelt among us. So if you read John chapter 1, that whole prologue, he makes that same point. That this one who was the word, what? Became flesh. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father. So John is laying it out that this one, and he says in verse 2, the life was manifested. This word of life, the life was manifested. And again, he goes on to say, we have seen and bear witness. So he says, we saw this word of life, we have seen him, and guess what? Now we bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. He says, we heard Jesus, we heard him speak to us, and now guess what? They're going out and doing the same. They're going out, we have seen him, and what we now declare it to you. And so as John is writing to the Christians here to this uh, church, He's writing to them, encourage them. He's reminding them. He says, this is the message we talked to you. We told you that this one, that the, which was with the Father, was manifested to us. That he came in the flesh. He's just trying to remind them. Remember, he's going to be combating false teaching here. 
And he's writing to them to encourage them in the faith and to keep them focused. He's speaking here in verse 2 about the incarnation. How the Son of God came and became flesh like one of us. So, so that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you. So he says it again. He spoke that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. Now that word there, fellowship, is a key word in the New Testament. It's the word koinonia. It means to have in common. And again, modern terminology, especially in church lingo, we think fellowship. Oh, fellowship hall, have something to eat. And I like that. I mean, that's okay with me. You know, have a fellowship hall. We've got a nice facility here. We can do that. Gather and eat. Uh, that's great. But fellowship is more than just sharing a meal. I would think it includes that. Because isn't it amazing how you can learn more about somebody if you sit down and have a meal with them? Absolutely. Amen. You sit down and you, you can, can be able to have conversation with one another. Uh, that's a, you know, sharing that thing, having that time of fellowship. But fellowship that he's speaking of here in 1 John uh, is the fellowship that we have with the Father. And if we all have fellowship with the Father, you know the Father through Jesus Christ, I know the Father through Jesus Christ, then guess what we have in common? Jesus. And we have a fellowship that is based not just on being physically related, not just living in the same area, you know, going to the same schools or you know, people have fellowship over all kinds of things. People may have fellowship. Some people like cars. Some people like quilting. And they can have a fellowship based on that. They have that in common. But the true fellowship, the one that he highlights for us, is the fellowship through his son, Jesus Christ. Having that fellowship with him in Christ <clears throat> is what we are to have. So that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship was with the Father, with His Son, Jesus Christ. He's highlighting this because, guess what? The false teachers are coming in and they're trying to lead them astray and take them, what, out of fellowship. They're trying, if they could, they're trying to subvert the gospel. They're trying to lead people in the wrong path. He says, stay together, is what he's saying. And as believers in Christ, stay together. He's going to highlight throughout the, the book of 1 John what our fellowship is based on. Our fellowship is not, again, based on anything in this world. It's based on who Christ is. And that's a fellowship that supersedes everything else. It supersedes any other uh, loyalties that we might have. We're to fellowship in Christ and it's to be based upon Him. So we see this. He's laying the foundation. He's combating the false teachers. He's showing that Jesus really came in the flesh and that we can have what? Fellowship with the Father through His Son, Jesus Christ. That God manifested Him to us. Jesus, uh, the Word of God, became flesh, dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glories of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, as it says in John chapter 1. Amen. And so we Amen. have that fellowship with Him. And then verse 4, I think, is interesting. Remember, he has been telling them, we heard from Jesus, we declared it to you, we told you, and now guess what he said? And these things we write to you, that your joy may be full, or our joy may be full. He's, he's saying, we're writing it down. We're writing this to you. And it's interesting, in the book of 1 John, several occasions he would say, we're writing this to you. I'm writing this to you. Number uh, here we see this in, in chapter one. He's writing he said he's writing what so that your joy may be full. In chapter two, verse one, he's writing what so that you may not sin. Why? So that you can have that close fellowship with the Father. He says, "I'm writing to you what no new commandment, but an old commandment." That's in chapter two, verse seven. He's writing that, that new commandment, which is what? Love one another. He says in verse 8, chapter 2, verse 8, I write a new command. It's, it's not new, but it is new. He's saying Christians love one another. Also in uh, chapter 2, he writes to the little children. He writes to the fathers. He writes to the young men. He encourages them in the faith. Also, he says, you know that no lie is of the truth. 
He's writing to them that stay in the truth to highlight that. And he says, I, he's writing to them concerning those who tried to deceive you, chapter 2, verse 26. Think of all these reasons that he's writing. He's first of all writing that you'll have joy in the Lord. He's writing that you'll stay holy, that you won't sin. He's writing that you'll what, love one another. He's encouraging us to do that. He's writing to encourage the different people in different stages of their faith. Some are more mature. Some are uh, just beginning. and Some are in between. He says, concerning, I'm writing to you concerning the false teachers. And in the last one, he says, I write in chapter 5, verse 13, that you may know you have eternal life. I mean, this, this is what our fellowship is based upon. I mean, that's why he's writing this, that you may know you have eternal life. Not that you may guess that you have eternal life, but that you what, may know it. Because it's based not on you, it's based on what God has done. It's based on his grace and mercy to us. So we trust him in that, that you may know that you have eternal life. So I just want to encourage you in, in 1 John just to uh, understand that there were false teachers in that day. There are false teachers in our day and time also. And so we need to be prepared, be fortified in the strength of the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you, Lord, and, and praise you for today. Pray that, Lord, you would guide and direct our minds and hearts in your way. And thank you for the book of 1 John. That, Lord, it was written for us to have joy. And it was written for us to, to know how to live, have fellowship with you. It was written to us to know that we have eternal life because of what Christ has done and how he truly came. He became flesh and was like us in all ways except for sin. So, Father, strengthen us, guide us. We pray all this in Jesus' precious name. And God's people say, Amen. 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 All right, well, appreciate you guys being here today. Let's say our vision verse together, and then we'll conclude our time, and then we'll continue on in prayer. Amen. Let's say this. Declare Amen. His glory Amen. among Amen. the nations. We get to do this. So God bless you. Thank you.